Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the podcast and today we have an extremely exciting podcast with Australia's number one sleep expert, Olivia Arizolo. And today we talk things, all things sleep. We talk about how, why, what you actually need to do and Olivia is kind enough to share with us her nighttime sleep routine and she also provides a pdf for us that we can go and use in terms to optimize our sleep so if you guys like our podcast and you get anything or you learn anything from this please just give us a like and a subscribe follow us if you're listening us on listening to us on a podcast platform and please if you're on youtube please check us a like and a subscribe that would help us out greatly. And of course, this podcast is brought to you by Turnum Labs. Obviously, our mission at Turnum Labs is to help you perform at your peak, live at your best for your longest. So if you guys are super interested in any of those different things, you can head to eternumlabs.com.au and you can look at our range of supplements. And as a little sneaky sneaky, we are coming out with some awesome new supplements this week, next week, the following week. So please stay tuned for those. In terms of like literally regarding to sleep, we have some awesome sleep products coming out. We'll talk about some of those in the podcast. And we also have some other things in the pipeline. So stay tuned for those. And also if the products that we currently have, we have like a lion's mane, an anti-aging range. We have a sleep supplement. We have a high performance get in the zone supplement and we have some vitamins as well. And if you use the code Corey, you can get yourself 10% off and that's for listeners only. So thank you guys so much for tuning in with so much appreciation for you and thanks for choosing to live the best life as as possible and I hope you guys enjoy this podcast as much as I did. Hello Olivia, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Ah, thanks for having me Corey. It is an absolute pleasure to be here sharing wisdom, knowledge and connecting with yourself who I believe to be a very beautiful, loving, and inspiring individual. Oh, well, thank you so much for that compliment. Back at you for that. Okay, I'd, I'd like to know what you've been researching recently and what you've been what you've been up to. What I have been up to, what I've been researching, mm-hmm. um, that's a very wide-ended, wide-ended question. Would you like me to answer <laughs> with regards to sleep or my personal life, like my business life or personal life? Let's go sleep first. I'd love to learn about some of the things that you've been researching or some recent lessons with sleep that you have learned that you think have been just interesting. Interesting. Um, absolutely. So sleeping, sleeping is optimized when you sleep naked with socks. <laughs> I like that. That's a really good one. <laughs> Not even kidding. It yeah. promotes weight loss. <laughs> yeah. So, so why is that? So how does that actually work? Um, so it promotes um, the movement of your blood to the your, your the distal ends of your body. You know all about that, Mr. Fitness. Um, distal, <laughs> not, not proximal. Um, and which, um, yeah, which promotes heat loss. When your body is in a cooler state, it encourages melatonin synthesis. Uh, melatonin is your key hormone to fall and stay asleep. That is crazy. Um, <laughs> Thing. Yeah, it's just interesting. so quickly. Get naked, yeah. sleep with the socks, heat, right. transfer, melatonin, boom. Right, right. <laughs> um, and to be to be completely transparent, um, I haven't been researching so much over the past few months because I did. I, I wrote my first book um, between um, December and I finished in May, and that was you know seventy thousand words of research and so after like I've got you know people say what can I do to improve sleep you know I've I've tried magnesium I've you know I'm uh, shutting off from screens nothing working I'm like like okay I recognize you're doing a few things but I wrote a book and I've listed out 77 ways so until you tried 77 ways like then come back to me and tell me you tried everything um but yeah so so after such a heavy you know research project it was like a thesis almost um I have really been loving space now to implement what I because I learned so much in that process you know like the ins and outs of all of everything to do with sleep you know be it sleep supplements and we were chatting about supplements before you know l-theanine um Beginning, um, GABA, CBD, adaptogens, like 
kava, ginseng, like so many of that. But also, I also learned so much around um, the interrelationships between different illnesses and sleep. Um, so, for example, Alzheimer's, um, autism, ADHD, um, cardiovascular disease, obesity, anxiety disorders, bipolar, depression, all of these are linked to sleep and actually learning the statistics around them. Um, and if you give me two seconds, I will bring up my chapter in my book and get three top health conditions like linked to sleep. Three top stats, like for example, we're getting the goodies here. We're getting some secrets out of the right? book, and we haven't even bought it. Book Thank you. Come out, you know. <laughs> no, um, okay, so for example, um, seventy-nine, no, ninety-seven percent of those with depression report sleep disturbances. Fifty-eight percent can't fall asleep. Fifty-nine percent wake frequently through the night, and sixty-one percent wake too early. Wow. Huge, yeah. Depression yeah. and and depression and insomnia are two of the most contraindicated um, conditions. Um, basically, they the neurotransmitter system that corrects one corrects the other, but also it sets off an SS, SSRI and the serotonin um, system. But which yes, that govern that governs mood, energy and sleep-wake cycles, hence why it's both in insomnia and depression. Um, you know, that's one example. Um, similarly, those with um, anxiety disorders, above the board, anxiety is the self-reported leading cause of sleep initiation problems, um, which is something that I see in my private clients' always pretty much and <laughs> yeah um, and research shows that up to 70 percent of those with generalized anxiety disorder have symptoms of insomnia Whoa. um and i'm another one that i just mentioned that i would love to bring to the forefront is alzheimer's um i know that a lot of people are struggling with like brain fog memory loss and perspectively, for a 40-year longitudinal study found that those with disturbed sleep were 51% more likely to develop Alzheimer's. Wow. Uh, yeah, 51% over a 40-year study. So it's not like it was just, you know, by chance. <laughs> it's sort of yeah. like it's like the, literally like the most important thing that you can focus on. And it can be yeah. like if you do focus on it and you do sleep well, it's going to be like the most important thing that's going to optimize your health and put you in the best energy and focus and help you live really long and healthy. And it's like, if you stuff it up, it's going to be the absolute worst right? thing and just be right? so detrimental to everything. Correct. But, but if you think about it, what other activity do we, are we biologically programmed to do for eight hours for our optimal function? Like we don't need to eat for eight hours. We don't need to walk for eight hours. Like it's, it must be pretty important in terms of the, you know, evolutionary um, process if biologically we have allocated so much time to this activity to be an optimal function. Um, but also, you know, when you, um, sorry, I'm just bringing up my other, my other statistics. If you don't sleep, you die. <laughs> Like, yeah. no, no, but it sounds funny, but um, I'm just going to ask how many days can I go without sleep? Because All after right. a few days, you start like hallucinating, right? Yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah. So the longest time it's ever, you're, the longest time anyone has ever done it has been 11 11 days but they were suffering from hallucinations um cognitive impairments delusions paranoia and psychosis so you know not ideal <laughs> yeah. Um, you know. yes and one thing i think is like it's like consistent bad sleep as well 
from like yeah. the, the the studies and stuff that I've or well not studied, but the research that I looked at is like if it's consistent bad sleep, then something's just not going to be healing or regenerating or detoxifying at night time. And then like however long from now, it's like well something's gone. <laughs> Absolutely. And usually that, that detoxifying, rejuvenating sleep, that's slow wave sleep. So just because you're sleeping doesn't mean you're getting good quality sleep. And that's why a lot of people are waking up after eight hours and they're feeling really unrefreshed and they're like, what's going on? It's because you're not spending long enough in slow wave sleep or REM sleep. Um, both, both are responsible for detoxification of beta amyloid and neurotoxin, which leads to brain fog, memory loss and Alzheimer's disease. Um, it's only detoxified during slow wave, during sleep and particularly during slow wave sleep um, because um, the brain doesn't have a lymphatic system like the other areas of the body. So um, essentially you need to sleep in order for your channels to open and detoxify from this um, neurotoxin. Well, I didn't know that. So literally sleep is the only time where your brain actually gets a flush. Correct. Whoa. Which is exactly, yes. And that's why after 17 hours of being awake, you have the performance level of somebody who has a blood alcohol level of 0.05. So semi drunk. Um, and when you think about that, that's like if somebody's woken up at, say, 5 a.m., they're, you know, they're trying to win the day. But for some 17 hours later, that's 10 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. And for a lot of, like, for a lot of people that that's, they're, they're awake for that long. Yeah. I think that's then, really important to, to yeah. like then, just know that. But then you wonder why it's so difficult to, you know, stop scrolling at the end of the night because your, your brain's performing as in your semi drunk, it particularly sleep deprivation, particularly impairs a frontal lobe responsible for decision-making <laughs> judgment, time management, you know, like you're scrolling and it feels like, you know, been five minutes and then it feel, and then you look up and you're like, oh my God, I've been here for an hour. Yeah. Like think about, it's exactly the same as if you've had, you know, a few, a few drinks. That's the effect of lack of sleep. Yeah. Which obviously can lead to, to, to more lack of sleep, to, to being awake later or being like stimulated later, which makes so much sense to me is to like why it's so much harder. Like if I do check my phone or get on my phone later at night when I have to, or, or I feel that I have to, or, or get in it or do something next minute, it's been a longer period of time. I've done all these different things and it's like, ah, oh, now I find it so much harder to switch off it's literally because it's like, well, if you do, because your decision making is going to be down, firstly, it's going to be easier to get onto it. And now it's going to be harder to get off at the same time. Crazy. Correct. Correct. But also blue, blue lights, inhibits melatonin. Blue light stems from your phone. Melatonin is key sleepiness hormone. The less melatonin you have, the harder you fall, you find it to fall and stay asleep. So as soon as you shine that that phone in your face, your brain gets signals that it's time to be awake, it's time to be alert, let's go, let's go, let's go. So even if you were fatigued before that, as soon as you jump on that phone, your brain gets like, it's almost like a hit of um, you know, adrenaline, um, and it's essentially the same signal that we received, you know, in our, that our ancestors received by the sunlight. The brain doesn't understand between artificial light and regular light. It just sees light. Light equals be awake. Light equals suppress melatonin, our sleepiness hormone, produce cortisol, our awakening hormone. So that's, that's what happens. And so as soon as you engage in that phone, that's, that's why you feel so awake. Crazy and so simple. <laughs> so, but yet so hard to do, <laughs> especially well, you, setting that up. It, it can be, but then you need to look at um, what are you, if you are trying to ingrain that habit, you know, switching off your phone, um, how, what's your why? What's your alternate? What are you going to do instead of scrolling on a phone? And you need to be genuinely enthused about that. Um, for example, reading, it's all good and well to say you read, but if you've got nothing that you actually want to read, you're not going to actually read. You, you need to look forward to the activity. Um, and if you don't, some people don't like reading, you know, I don't personally like reading late at night. My brain likes to float off into la la land. I don't want to be thinking. Otherwise I 
start thinking and I read nonfiction. So I'd start, you know, analyzing and assessing and that's not what I want to be doing at you know, 10 30. Yeah. So, um, you know, like there's other activities like, you know, having a conversation with a real life person that you're living with. Mind blowing. Um, journaling, you know, reflecting on, Hey, what were my top three highlights of today? What am I, what's my lesson for today? What can I do better tomorrow? What's my three year goals? For my, what are, what long-term goal did I work towards today? Um, yeah. yeah. Listening to music, for example, that's when I find really, really relaxing meditating, listening to a guided meditation, breath work. All these things that we always think, oh, one day it'd be really nice to do any of these, you know, yin yoga, like a really relaxing, restorative yin yoga session. It's possible that there's so many more things that we can do rather than scroll on our phones. Yeah, I think it's really important to like, just like, as yourself, or like putting a little vice on yourself of having like a certain time of the night where it's like, all right, but that works for you, obviously, because everyone's going to have different times. But like just a cut off time to be like, I'm done with everything. Yeah. <laughs> like I have to cut everything off right now because otherwise it keeps yeah. building on because I've just moved houses and I've moved from Adelaide to Queensland. And like I've just found personally, like in Adelaide, like I wanted to, I was getting read fatigue for a while and I was like, well, I need to keep up my habit of reading. So how am I going to get good at it? Because the le- I find like the less I read, the harder it is to start reading. So I, I started reading a nonfiction book, which is like what really works good for me. Like some really cool, like sort of fantasy books that I can like read before bed. So I'm like, oh yes, I'll let my mind nice. go. But I can't like at the moment, because everything's like moving house and there's like so much to do. I, I, I haven't figured out the strategy <laughs> in terms of turn things, everything off here, there, whatever, and now actually get into book and uh, get into bed and start reading. So mm. instead I've been, cause I've been trying for a week and I've just been failing. I've just been working until I've gone to bed and been like, no, oh, no. however, however, I have been trying to eat a lot earlier and go for walks later at nighttime so Perfect. that I actually can get a better sleep. So instead for the, for the past couple of nights this week, I've gone I'm going to have a bath. <laughs> I'm going to have a bath later at night. So I'm like anti-stimulus. So when it's time to go to bed, like it's actually time to go to bed. And then the stats of my aura ring were just like, they were like trending down so bad. Yeah. And they just yeah. went whoop, straight back up again. I was like, yes. I love it. Well done. Good course <laughs> yeah. correct. Yeah. That was like, yeah. yeah, it took, took a little bit to like learn, but there's still not all the systems and all the cutoff times for me are set in place just yet, but we're, we're, we're well on well on the way and i'm almost ready to make the decision to be like this is the time this is what i'm gonna do this is the routine i love it i love what what i i've recommend so i have a signature bedtime routine Mm -hmm. and i recommend um step three is one hour before bed um have a good night phone alarm which is the the time that you need to get off all devices and you want to label that alarm sleep better so then like as soon as the alarm pops up you're like that's right i'm gonna do this otherwise i'm not gonna sleep well I really uh, like that with that whole sleep better because I've had night, I, sometimes my, my phone comes up and it's like bedtime's approaching. I'm like, yeah, but I've got to do like a hundred other things. I'll quickly do them now. I, sleep better is awesome because obviously you're just going to be like, well, my goal is to sleep better I, because it's going to be better for tomorrow. Yeah. What a trigger. What an abs- What a great little hack. But I think it's also, um, you've also got to have, it's like essentially, you know, switching off from that phone an hour early, you've got to have the replacement activity that you, you're entertained by but then also um having a tracking that habit and having a reward for when you have like you know seven a seven day streak so i've just recently read atomic habits by james clear and it's reminded me of the importance of tracking habits and having a you know goal to work towards so um you know i so I personally just, I have a goal to have no alcohol outside of one day a week, which is a challenge for me because I love an Aperol spritz. Like <laughs> it's just my She's favorite. She's been to Europe. And, She's been to Europe. Right, right? <laughs> it's Italian, you know? Yeah. Um, but, you know, I really want to, I've got a lot of work to do. I've got a lot of people to help. And I know that if I'm spritzing every day, it's not going to get done. Um, so I made a commitment to myself, you know, that's my goal. And if I get a, you know, seven day streak, I get a hundred dollars to spend on whatever I want. And then if I get a 28 day streak, I get a $400 bonus. 
and like I'm super motivated now. Like yeah. it's I'm excited not to drink. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go have I'm gonna go buy all this sparkling water now. <laughs> But the thing is that until I put, you know, until I, and now I'm like giving myself a star every day. And that's like that, that positive reinforcement in the time and place is what we need. We can't just have a distant goal, you know, like, okay, it's all good to say like sleep better, but sleep better happens later. What am I going to gain right now from switching off from my screens? I want the reward now which is why you need to have the alternate activity as something you really want to do. I want, you know, okay, I switch off my screens. What's my reward? I get to read my favorite book. Amazing. Love it. It's not hard. Yeah, but, but you get, you'd be aware of it to, to end up getting in there and actually doing it, which I think is, you know, raising this awareness and like you writing your book and going out there and learning all these things and doing like a, yeah. a damn thesis paper on there is like so ridiculously important. What do, you, what do you think, just for like people who are listening, what do you think would be some of, just, just on the top of your head, like what do you think would be some of the best things just for people in general, just as a start, like to do in terms of going, like getting a better sleep and then what not to do in terms of getting a better sleep? Because I find it's always easy to get somebody like, oh, you should get this, you should get that. And they'll go, yeah, yeah, they get all the things. And then once they do that, I'm like, all right, now you're going to remove this and take this away because people are yeah. like, no, I don't want to do that because uninstalling habits is a little bit harder than installing new ones. So from your opinion, what do you think about that? Um, so I have a signature bedtime routine that 100% of my private clients have seen improvements when they've done it in less than seven days. Yes. So that's, yeah, it's good. That's a place that I start. Um, that routine, block out blue light two hours before bed. Diffuse lavender, have a good night phone alarm, 60 minutes before bed. Sleep we'll just better. Boom. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, have a shower, meditate or read, and sorry, have a magnesium based sleep supplement, meditate or read, and wear an eye mask. Um, I've got an ebook that I'm happy to share with your listeners. So I'll send you the link afterwards that has oh, beautiful. The- behind absolutely um that has the reasons behind all of those things so also no it's not just about doing one or two you've got to do the collection for at least seven days to see greatest results um so that would be what my that and that's helpful for people help looking to fall and stay asleep easier and wake up more refreshed um yeah. things not to do um look at blue light in the evening <laughs> to within two hours of bed yep. um be on your device within an hour of bed um eating late is actually one of the biggest sleep saboteurs all of my private clients when they eat earlier and even personally they always sleep better it's digestion is one of the most taxing activities on the body it requires 10 percent of our entire energy so when your body is trying to move into its greatest state of rest you can't be actively digesting your dinner because it's com- it's a complete juxtaposition. So you're you're only going to you know increase your tax on the body at a time when you're meant to be resting. But it's also it's a thermogenic process. It heats the core body. It you know that that it's that process heats your core body temperature. Whoa. Remember what I said first up about sleeping naked. Yeah, you need to have a cool core body temperature for melatonin to be produced. So it also suppresses your release of melatonin. Holy! So now I knew digestion was like pretty bad in terms of if you eat really late at night, it is going to stuff you up. Just because I track everything on the ordering, so I can see it, and it's gotten to the point now where I just keep eating earlier and earlier. And it's like I'm eating dinner now at four thirty. Is like my goal. Like I try yeah. to eat dinner at four thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then cut it out for like a few hours before bed because that's when I see like the best results. Even when it's from like six, if I eat at six or, or seven, it's like ah, sleep is just not as good as what it is right. if it's at 4.30. But I did not know that um, eating also raises your core temperature, which makes a lot of sense because obviously, yes, as you mentioned, you want to get cold before you get to bed so you can get a better sleep. Absolutely. Yeah, there's just more reasons, upon reasons as to why (laughs) not to eat too late, which is like real hard, especially like, I guess, with like our culture and stuff and people just heading out to go to dinner or if you've got friends over, you're doing something, it's really hard to be like, 
Can we have dinner at 4.30, guys? <laughs> Absolutely. I feel um, it's interesting, though. They, I, I know it's like society, society has, you know, eating us eating later and later, but the people that give the most, that prioritise their health, I find they always eat dinner and prioritise their sleep. So it's... um. Yeah, and I, I could share a lot more things, but for anyone listening, I'd rather just make sure you do the bedtime routine first and foremost, then work work on that first. And um, if you do want to see more improvements, come and find me over on Instagram. If you type on type in sleep expert, then I can give you some more recommendations. Yeah, that's some more good. I think that's a really important point that you make as well. That it's, it's never just one thing. It's doing multiple things together on a consistent basis and finding like the best ones that are obviously going to work for you and that are applicable to you. I think that's like absolutely genius because it, like even if people ask me questions or something about it, it's very easy to say, oh, just take some magnesium. Oh, have a magnesium bath. Oh, have a walk, have a bit of a walk before bed or something. And people will try the things, but it's, it's always something that comes like stacked together. So I think that mm. your signature thing is great. My signature bedtime routine is great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All good. So for people who, I guess, how would you best like motivate people to actually start to prioritize their sleep? And, and help them become aware that they need to prioritize it. Because obviously it's one thing to know all of these all of these things in terms of like, like what to do, what to hear. But it's another thing for people to actually get motivated to do the stuff in their sleep. So what would you say to those people? I would ask you what type of person do you want to be? Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to be the person that takes responsibility for their health, their life, their wellness, their mental clarity? Or do you want to be the type of person that is complaining to your mates day after day that how tired you are and you're and you're saying you're sending another email saying sorry I couldn't finish this last night I was exhausted what person who are you make your decision take responsibility for who you are because um, your choices dictate who you are we are our habits so whatever person you want to be be in your habits if you want to be a healthy person have health health have healthy habits if you want to be a grounded person have grounding habits if you want to if you want to be a sleep optimized person have healthy sleep habits it's very simple it's i think it's about asking yourself what kind of person am i and what kind of person do i want to be moving forward um once you really get clear on who you are and who you want to be in the world and the effects that you want to have on other people, you know, what do you want, what do you want them to say about you when you leave the room? That person was a great energy. They had so much vibrance. They had so much um, wisdom, knowledge. What do you want them to say? Oh God, I don't want them to come around. They were just, you know, they just sat there and complained, you know, but the yeah. thing is that we, we know these people, we hear them. We hear them all the time in society and, you know, when forming new habits, when forming new, you know, staying focused on our goals, it's just like, who am I? Who do I want to be? At the end of this year, what do I want to finish on? I just made a commitment to myself. I want to finish in that the happiest and healthiest version of myself, mentally, physically, spiritually, socially. Hence my no alcohol. <laughs> but one day. Because that's, so that's like the physical health, but then like the, you know, mental health as well. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you choose that? How did, how did you get into that? Um, what, like, what was your journey from, um, I would say, focusing on sleep and then mastering that and then choosing, and then choosing the goal that you just mentioned then? Oh, um, well, sleep is my profession. Yep. Alcohol is just something that I love it. Like yep. I'll, I'm not saying like, I'm not an alcoholic or anything, but Given given April spritz to me on a sunny afternoon and pretty much any day, I'll, I'll say yes. Spritz Sundays. <laughs> it's happening. Spritz, spritz every day. <laughs> no, no. And, um, you know, I I just, I just had been, I'd 
just been staying with one of my best friends in Airbnb for a month. I'm also moving between places. And, um, you know, like when you're staying with one of your best friends and you've, you're working together, you know, it's pretty easy to most days be, you know, having an afternoon spritz. And I just sort of got honest with myself and I was waking up not feeling overly good. Um, I love to run and I was noticing I wasn't able to run as much. And um, that was actually the main thing. I noticed because it's, it's not only when you spritz, you also then, you know, you have like a cheese board and like quince and olives and crackers instead of like, you know, like an actual lunch. And if you do that for a few weeks, your body starts to give you these signals like, I don't like this. And so I was waking up and, you know, going, to, trying to go for my runs and like in that much pain physically just because my body's just like, you can't run if you nourish me with olives and spritz. No. <laughs> you cannot do that. <laughs> yeah, no. And so I just I just heard myself sort of say this to a lot of people. Like, oh, I'm, I can't run right now, but, you know, it's just, um, you know, it just must be my body's like recovering. I'm recovering mm-hmm. from anorexia at the moment. And so, like, oh, maybe it's just, you know, I'm in the recovery phase. And I sort of just just heard myself saying this to you know, others and feeling really frustrated as well because it's my it's my high, it's it's what I it's what lights up my mornings. I I get I get excited. This is why I find going to bed so easy because I love my morning runs. I really mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. And and I noticed that I was like, you know what? I haven't always felt like this, and so it must be something I'm doing. I'm like, what am I doing that's particularly you know, unhealthy. I'm like, well, it's probably the spritz I drink because, <laughs> because outside of that, like I am pretty healthy. You know, I sleep really well. I meditate daily. I, um, you know, do weight training as well. So like strengthen my muscles. Um, I eat well, like, you know, I do all these other things. And I was just like, what's, what's like really what's, what's inflaming my body. And then I did some Googling and I was like, oh, alcohol. Yeah, of course. And I was like, oh, that's right. I pretty much have had a spritz most days for the last month. Hmm. Hmm. How about that, Olivia? How about this indeed? And I just, and I just went for a really long walk and I just said, what's more important to you? Spritzing every day or going for your morning runs and connecting with yourself and nature and getting in your best, being the best version of yourself. What's more important to you? What kind of person are you? Who do you want to be? Who do you want to be at the end of this year? That person that's complaining that they can't run? Or do you want to be that vibrant, energetic, um, bubbly being? I know I have been in the past. And I just I just called it. And then so I I just said I need to, I'm giving myself one day a week of um, of leeway because that means that it is a treat and I can enjoy it as a treat, which is okay, completely okay. Um and so, yeah, I made that goal and then I wrote it on my habit tracker and I've been giving myself stars every day and then I created a reward system. Um, I created a punishment system. If I, <laughs> if I, if I, if I, if I uh, mess up for one day or, you know, I have alcohol on more than one day, then I have to do cleaning for an hour. I hate cleaning. <laughs> I will pay somebody to clean everything of mine. It's I, happily like cleaning. I hate so much. <laughs> so, but the thing is, I know that if if it's I've signed I've signed it now. Like I wrote it down and I signed the bottom. Yes. And um, I got my accountability partner to sign as well. And I was like, I have to clean if I drink more than I hate cleaning. So I'm just. Ugh. So yeah. So that's <laughs> um that's a bit about that journey. Yeah, I really and it's like just, that. Like, Thanks. Thanks. So I guess, you know, I'm, I see myself as a leader in the wellness space. Mm -hmm. I advise my sleep coaching clients to avoid alcohol, you know, outside of one or two drinks a week, if they're really trying to optimize their, um, you know, their sleep. And although I'm not trying to optimize my sleep, I am trying to optimize my energy. And I know that I know how detrimental alcohol is. It's fine, you know, in, you know, on special occasions, but as a regular, it shouldn't be, shouldn't be, a, it shouldn't just be a regular afternoon drink. No, that's, that's not what I'm standing for. And I don't want to be one of those people that says one thing and does another. 
Yeah, and I think it's really important that you just got aware of that really quickly. And because of all the work that you've done and everything that you know, I think it was very easy for you to pull yourself up on that pretty quickly instead of, you know, go one year, two year and be like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm super self-aware. I, that's, that's what I do on my runs. I reflect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, which is so, um, fantastic. How, how did you get into sleep, by the way? What sort of led you and landing into diving in and learning everything about sleep? Um, so really when I was, um, six, about from 14 to 17, I was really unwell. I was, um, depressed. I was suicidal. I tried to attempt attempt to suicide. Um, I was bulimic. I had anorexia. I was hospitalized for anorexia. I was then hospitalized for, um, as in my psychiatric ward as well. It was, I was, I was an absolute mess. And I had to go through a process of getting better and I had a lot of coaches and a lot of support and many years and a lot of love from my, from my darling mum and darling father and, you know, just therapists and all of that. And after that, I knew that I had to help people um, transform like I had because I know how bad it could be, but I also knew how good, how good it can be. Um, so I made a decision to, do, to become like a wellness leader and a wellness coach and then I studied this way. I studied a bachelor of psych, a bachelor of social science psychology, a certificate of sleep psychology, diploma of health science, nutritional medicine, and a certificate three and four in fitness. Um, you know, I learned essentially, um, you know, how to help people not only feel better from my personal experience, but how to actually help them feel better inside and out from you know clinical research. Um, so that was my goal, help, help, help people feel better inside and out. Um, and, and then I started helping with different areas, like a bit of weight loss, mindset, stress, and then I did some sleep clients. My sleep clients got really great results really fast. And then I started telling other people and I, I started realizing that everyone had a problem with sleep and no one was doing anything <laughs> about it. <laughs> and I could be really helpful here. Yeah. So I decided to specialize. And then a few months later, Steely Postropedic uh, asked me to be their media ambassador for um, for a campaign. And I thought, that's pretty great. Steely's yeah, like cool. global. Yeah. And then a few months later, um, IKEA did the same thing. And yeah, and so, you know, if there was any doubt in my mind that I was in the right space, getting two global companies um, asked me to be their, you know, media representative was enough for me. So I decided to hone in and, Few few years later, here I am, and I was just featured on Forbes. So you know, so you're like woohoo, definitely on the right path then. <laughs> I think so. I think so. No, I really like that. I think that's that's quite awesome, and I can um, really respect that, especially when you sort of find something that you're really passionate about and that you can help people with. It's sort of like everything around you will sort of just support you to help push you um, forward. So Absolutely. I think that's fantastic. And that's yeah, that's truly what I feel. I feel the universe was like, we need you to be here, Olivia you need to do this. And it just gave me all the signals. And I was just was like, okay, universe, I trust you. <laughs> Sounds I'm good. doing it. I'm writing a 70,000 word book on all of this I, good stuff and getting it done. Yeah, my, my publisher just emailed me. Like it was literally as, as random as Steely and Ikea. Like they just sent me a, like, I'd never heard of them before. I haven't connected with, you know, any of them on Instagram or, you know, an event or something like that. They just popped into my email. email. Like, Hey, have you thought about writing a book on sleep? I was like, Yes, I have thought about it. I just haven't done anything about it. But if you want to make me an offer and, uh, you know, discuss doing this together, yeah, I'd be interested for sure. Yeah. And I did. And then I did a bit of, you know, a bit of negotiation, of course. And then, you know, the, I think the last week in December, I signed my contract. I was like, cool. Looks like I'm writing a book. <laughs> Let's start writing. <laughs> Man, I must, I must yeah. uh, say that must be so tough. That was how I'm like writing a book. I hear is one of the hardest things it, that you can like ever do. It, it was really isolating. Yeah. Yeah. Good work. I'm glad I did it. I learned so much, yeah. but I'm glad that I did it and I don't have to do it again. <laughs> Not until my next book, but that's yeah. going to be different. Yeah. That's, that's going to be about my personal journey. So. Cool bit more i won't have to sit for hours look, reading uh academic databases <laughs> yeah it'll be more i um, could probably just go i can probably just go to the beach and um you know look at the look at the oceans and everything will come out 
Yeah, it'd be a lot more relatable, I'm assuming. As well, I'd love to hear um, like a success story that you've had or tell us about a time when you've been working with one of your clients and and they've done some of the things and they've just achieved like better results, and better sleep. I'd love to hear, hear about one of those stories. Yeah, sure. Um, my first sleep client, so I literally like this is client number one. Um oh, He'd had insomnia for about 30 years because he used to be a DJ and, you know, terrible sleep patterns. And the longest he could sleep for was um, three to four hours within two weeks. And that was for 20 years. And then within two weeks, we had him sleeping, I think, six hours. Crazy. Yeah. And it was just, it was using the same principles that I use now. Um you know, I usually I get, usually I'll see um, change within the first few weeks. Um, some of my other clients who were wake, another client of mine, she was waking up, I think four times a night, every night within one week of seeing me, she woke up once on one occasion. Well, what was she doing? She was just constantly unable to get back to, um, unable to sleep longer than like 90 minutes. It was awful. Oh gosh. So what, what were some of the things that you guys actually went through and did so that she could figure that out? Um, well, that would be, um, I probably can't share specific, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. but you know, each, each of my clients, I go through, um, specific strategies that I recommend for their lifestyle and, you know, understand what are the key triggers for your sleeplessness is it a is it a health condition is it your sleeping environment is it your stress levels that you're not managing effectively is it your diet is it your sleep supplements is it um antidepressants antidepressants are huge um factor as well um is it a combination of all of these things um so you know one just the key triggers then I can recommend a specific um, strategy for that, that client. And I think that's why I get such, such great results um, because I don't approach it just from sleep as well. Like I look at the holistic pattern. So it's from the environmental. So like, you know, your sleep environment, but also from your, <clears throat> from your diet, from also from your lifestyle and fitness, um, from also from just a sleep sleep perspective, you know, how much light you exposed to during the day and night. Um, psychological as well. How you, how is your stress being managed? Um, you know, like these are all, I studied for nine years. I studied for all, all of these things and I draw upon that. And that's why it works because sleep is a sleep. The reason people sleep better is due to all of those factors. It's not just about blue light or it's not just about diet. It's not just about stress. It's all of those things. So you need to understand all of those things to be able to fix it properly. It's always so interconnected. Hey, it's sort of like there's a little, there's like someone gives you, this is my life in my sleep and it's just a tangled knot of headphones. And then you're just. <laughs> it's fun. It's it fun. You get to, it's fun. I love it. You, they come with problems. They live with solutions. I like it. Yeah. What are your um, like either favorite supplements or I know we we're talking about some teas that you had beforehand because we we're talking about caffeine supplements and teas. What do you think is like some of the things that, that you would recommend for people yeah. um, for sleep in general? If they just wanted to be like, oh, I just want to grab a couple of little things, <laughs> try some things out. What are, what are some of your favorites? Absolutely. So, um, of course, magnesium's number one. Yep. Um, Any specific type of magnesium? You need to have my magnesium chelate or which is also glycinate. Yep. Um, that is the most helpful for sleep. Yep. Um, I also love ashwagandha. It's an adaptogen. So it mediates the stress response. Um, I also love omega threes. They've been super, super helpful, not only for sleep, but also for anxiety. Um, and anxiety is one of the leading causes of sleeplessness, as I mentioned mm. before. Do you and take them in the morning or nighttime, I ask, the, like your omega-3s? I take them in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a, pro a daily probiotic. That's, those are kind of my four fundamentals. 
Um, yeah, they're my four fundamentals. But there's a lot, there's, yeah, I think, I feel like I really want to emphasize that it's not just about doing, you know, the sleep supplements and the signature bedtime routine. There are like countless ways that I could advise the, for you personally to sleep better. I think if, if somebody is struggling and there are so many ways that we can improve it. Um, and it's really important that you don't, you don't just sit with the sleeplessness. You actually take action and, you know, become the person that sleeps better and inspires others with your transformation and yeah. just stuck in the rut and doesn't allow themselves to be stuck in the rut. Yeah. You know, there are, so- there are people like myself that can help. So if you need help, come to me, let's yeah. chat. Yeah, for sure. And if everyone is listening, all of Olivia's stuff will be linked below. So you can just click on that to find any of her stuff. Obviously, she's um, got that little resource that she's going to put in there as well. So you guys can find anything on there too, which is really good. Yeah. And one thing as well, um, to like to motivate myself for sleep, because as you were talking, you just triggered this. Um, just myself personally, I don't mind like sort of how much money I sort of spend on sleep because I try to recognize that it's one of like the most important things you can do. And I bought a HEPA filter, which is like a like an air cleaner, air purifier. Mm-hmm. And um, just for myself personally, because I get like allergies, like for blocked nose all the time, like, <laughs> I um, I got a HEPA filter and it's been it's been fantastic to be honest. Nice. Yeah. I'm glad to hear. Yeah, I'm glad really that you're on the self, on the sleep optimizing journey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's a maybe you can one. implement some of the strategies that I recommend for getting off your phone, and uh, you'll be on an even f- you'll be even further along your sleep optimized journey. Yeah, that's the main one. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to implement that one for sure. And I'm gonna give the um, uh, signature nighttime routine an absolute rundown for sure and, and see how that goes. So I don't hold you on for too much longer. If there was anything else that you'd like to share with anyone who is listening, or if you've got any words of wisdom or um, knowledge or inspiration, uh, in, um, inspiration, I'd love for you to share. Um, thank you. I think the only, can I answer that? And let me reflect on that. But can I ask you, what's been the best thing that you've learned today? The best thing that I have learned today um, is probably reinforcing how important the digestion is for, mm-hmm. for getting to sleep and, and also just the awareness of it. Like when you were, new, when you were using your own example, of just it's not just what do I do and like how do I do it? It's actually taking the time to learn all of these different things and seeking someone out like yourself or doing the research, figuring out what other people and just being, I would say, firstly, as you mentioned beforehand, prioritizing yourself, saying like, you know, what's the best version of myself? I love look, always doing that, looking, looking at like, why are you alive? What's your purpose? Who do you want to be? Who do you want to show up? And obviously, what are the things that are going to put you back down and obviously in terms of all health I assume that everyone knows that sleep is important right we all know sleep is important but why and seeking someone like you reading your book going through some of the things that you've mentioned or researching like I have I've written an article on sleep as well a while ago people can go coreybowell.com if you want to have a look at that but you can it's just simply being aware of understanding all these different things because once you know why is what's going to motivate you i believe to actually stick to your sleep and you reinforce that like 50 times <laughs> as we were chatting so thank you so much for saying that because it just it just yeah just rejogged my mind to be like yep as well like for myself personally to be like well i'm actually going to sit down or go for a walk and think about my sleep for the for the past week because changing up to a new environment is like ah what's the what's the what's the best routine that I want to have um so I think it was like really good that I've chatted to you because now I've got some stuff to look forward to (laughs) ah thank you yeah so yeah that probably some of the best things that I've learned so thank you for sharing those things pleasure pleasure um and I think the I think you know the last thing I'd want to leave the leave your listeners with is just start just do one thing you don't have to do everything, but if you do one thing, then you become comfortable doing one thing. And then maybe tomorrow when you're comfortable with one, doing one thing, you can do two things. Remember, if we get 1% better every day over the course of 365 days, we are 365% better. Yeah. Right? So just, just start. Just do one thing. 
Um, we've given you a ton of things that you could do. So take your pick and just start and start sleeping better. Yeah, I love that. 1% day thing resonates to me so much because there's a quote that I love saying and it's like, how do you finish a book? And that is to read one page a day. And it's like, why is that? It's because if you don't read the book for two, three weeks, then you go back in and you're like, where was I? Who's the characters? What's happening in the story? What's going on this? But if you're just focusing on one page a day or 1% better, you're constantly mm-hmm. refreshing yourself and you're just building that up. So it's going to solidify a whole lot more. So thank you so much for sharing that, that, that triggered that. And I was like, oh yes. Pleasure. Cool. All right, thank, well, thank you so much for coming me. into the show. Yeah. yeah, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Where can people find you if they want to have a look and follow you on all of the stuff? So the best place to connect with me is on Instagram. Um, usually I come up the first one if you type in sleep expert. Yep. Um, my name's Olivia and otherwise my name's Olivia Arizolo, but it's very hard to type. So just sleep expert. I'm on Instagram and then it has all my links to my website and my um, email list and everything like that as well. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Pleasure.